Hello, Wasatch Stars. I miss you all so much, and I wish that we were in person, but we're gonna have some a lot of fun with these online courses that I'm gonna post. And then we get to Zoom on Thursday or Friday and talk about what you did. And hopefully you'll have time during the week to start these things. And then by Thursday or Friday, you'll show me what you've done and whether or not you fall, uh, run into some troubles and I can help troubleshoot with you and we can figure out some really fun art. I want you to come out with some pieces that you really love and that are really fun. So we're gonna go through the elements of art. I know you've all been through it a million times being third and fourth graders, but we're gonna go through it one more time. And so I'll be really quick with how we do that. Um, the first element is gonna be line. So we're gonna talk about that, but in a different way. And I'm going to use a new uh, book uh, to kind of explore that in a negative um, in a negative light kind of way and the book that I am going to base our art off of and we can do a lot of different things with it is a book called flashlight it's by Lizzie Boyd and I'm going to read it to you because after you see what this book is about then you can kind of get an idea about what kind of art that we're going to make and what I want it to look like. So, um, this is one of my favorite kind of books, and I'll read it to you because I love reading books that have no words. So, because this has no words that are written down, it has every kind of word that you can imagine that you can use in your head to tell this story. There are great stories happening in this book. So that there's other kind of neat things that happen too, I'll point out as we turn the pages. But as you can see, the different line qualities that are used in the different trees and everything is at night. So they're using a white pencil or white crayon to build this little forest and to tell a story about what's in the dark and maybe they're afraid of what's in the dark i don't know when i can't see something it seems fearful so this little boy or little girl has a flashlight and within the flashlight light it lights up and becomes something recognizable something not scary at all even if it's kind of scary it's a bat and when you can see it you know what to do with it so no big deal right so there they are camping. They've got their tent. They've got the cool little um, raccoon hanging out. There's a bird nesting in the tree. Notice all the really cool details. There's smooth lines. There's shapes made of lines. They're spiky. You can see texture with these lines. You can tell that's netting. They've used the element of line to tell lots of stories. Now in this book, what makes it neat is there's also cutouts and the cutouts correspond when you turn the page to showing up um, leaves of what was lit up by the flashlight. So that's super clever. And we're not gonna uh, put that into our art, at least not this first time around, because that's a little bit advanced and technical, but we are going to use a white pencil and create a world and then have a world that's lit up and colorful within our flashlight. So be thinking of that as you read this book and see what's going on, see what parts are lit up. What I like about this one is half of the little mouse is lit up and half of him is in the dark still. There's things lurking behind trees and the moon is coming up. Let's see what happens. Oh, and through this is a hole. You see a little squirrel and then that hole goes over the moon. The moon remains there. Oh, I love this. I think that's more scary in the light than it is in the dark to see a skunk. All the little creatures what's in the water. You can tell this is water by the little movement lines showing the current of the water. So a lot of line will tell story about what it is. Does it stand straight up? 
Is it a plant? Is it water? Does it move? Is it static? Or is there repetition of line kind of creating a family effect? Is there framing that you use line for to frame out something that you want to highlight, that little animal? And there's also some layering. That you can tell which trees are in front of other trees. So there's layering that's happening in this book. Now what are they finding? Oh, in that water, he's lit up a beaver. The other little creatures are in the dark now. I can imagine the sounds that he's hearing of all these things making. Imagine what those sounds might be and what it might be like in the dark. There's those skunks lurking behind the tree again, but that's not what he's lighting up this time. Let's see what's gonna be in that hole. Ah. Oh, the mice. And the lines are very simple. Even these little flowers, they're really just a circle and an X. The little moths, they're just almost a heart shape and uh, with little antenna. You can be very simple with lines and tell a story. The raccoon has a triangle face and little round ears and an oval tail. When you think about the shapes that these lines are making, you can easily make all these creatures. It doesn't seem so daunting. It doesn't seem so hard. When you think about that owl being an oval, he's kind of behind the tree, but he's got an oval body, a round head, round eyes, a triangle beak, triangle wing. So when you break it down into its shapes, these animals are gonna be easy to make. What next? Oh, my fate, oh, the little moths are lit up through that. And look at those toadstools and my favorite fox and his tail is still in the dark. what is going to happen. There's a lot of repetition in this book where the same creatures are continue to show up. That means they're not moving around too much or maybe they are and the creatures are following them as they move around the forest. Now you can see some man-made elements that are starting to creep in and they look a little different. They're a little more structured. They have um, some consistency and evenness to them. They're more geometric shapes as opposed to organic shapes, which are how things are grown, which are not um, squares, triangles, circles. A lot of wonderful textural shapes in those tree trunks. And a deer has joined us, a little fawn with spots. There's something in this cutout. What is it? A little mouse and a little rabbit reveals itself. The same creatures are still turning up. The beautiful textures. Uh-oh, something's happening. trip and he loses his flashlight. I wonder what the world will feel like to him when he loses that light. I think he'll be comfortable now that he's seen things or will it be scary? Oh, I think he looks a little bit worried. Lines can show emotion. And facial lines can tell that story. can decide what's happening here. You can decide what he's thinking and what? The tables are a little bit turned, aren't they? Huh, I wonder how he likes that. What would that feel like? Have you ever had a flashlight shined in your eyes and in your face? <gasps> that is funny. I like how part of him is dark. 
heart is in the light. The flashlight beam is a triangle. And so when we come to making our own piece, we will look at that triangle shape and decide what is going to be lit up in that triangle. I like how he has them clutching it with their front legs because they have no hands. Oh, the owl has revealed quite an array of things, hasn't he? And it looks like they are taking him back to his tent and putting him to bed with a book. And maybe it's this book indeed. And on the back page, there's all sorts of different organic lines making the shapes of the different plants. And I think those are real plants you find in the forest. So it's really fun to look at this book. If you can find this book in the library, go check it out. I've been able to share it because of um, them allowing us to read books to kids for education. So I hope you go look at this. And the next video I post will be us getting a black piece of paper that I've sent home with you and some white colored pencils. And we'll do more of an instructional video next based on this book. So until then, say goodbye to the art puppy. Good night. <laughs>